Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce. And of course, I am joined here with my friend, Nicole, who's the the caravanning warrior gypsy at the moment, <laughs> gallivanting around the world. Bebopping around the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's I, 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 I'm hoping and praying I can eventually meet up with you guys and join you on your I love a good adventure. There's nothing better than a, I mean, that's why we ended up in this situation to begin with. Right. We're like, we'll take a good adventure. This sounds fun. Yes, I've named it the faith journey because it is definitely being fueled by my faith. And uh, it's been so much fun. It still is so much fun every single day. I just did a show this morning with Hillis and we were talking about different things. And I said, you know, it's just, I find myself like you, Bryce, I find myself, I'll end up working 12, 13, 14 hours on something, you know, the day just gets away from me, but it's so much fun. It doesn't feel like work. It doesn't feel like a chore. It doesn't feel like anything that I'm giving my power away to. It's me reclaiming my power and really putting it forth for the greater good and so i'm super excited it is fun and it's like i just released um i know this episode is going to be airing on thursday morning but yesterday wednesday morning i released the Boudica episode which we're going to talk a little bit more about towards the end of this episode but you're right when i like got back into like it's fun when you start to like uncover things and like spirits kind of guiding you where yeah. to go and where to look and it's like all the puzzle pieces start to come together and you're like yeah. I mean, just call us Nancy Drew. Like, here we are, you know? I know. I told Hillis, I'm like, to see, like, the, the demonstration and the illustration of sacred geometry and putting pieces together that things that happened 10, 15, 20 years ago, you know, making so much sense right now, it, it's really um, motivating, but it's beautiful. I love it. And I want to do, I told Hillis this, I want to do a roundtable with you and Hillis both together because Hillis is just amazing, you guys. He... Nicole and I met, I'll put in my description box, I'll put my episode with Hillis and I'll put Nicole's episode with Hillis as well. Um, we met him through ASEA and I had no idea that he was a weirdo like we are. Like I had no yeah. idea. I thought he was like some corporate guy, you know, in the meetings that I had with him. And then all of a sudden come to find out he's this like spiritual genius and so in tuned to what's going on and really clinging to the spirituality of this all, not necessarily like the Intel. And I think that's what a lot of us that are, are kind of almost moving away from Intel because Intel doesn't even really matter at this point. Mm -hmm. Right. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's the spirituality that matters. And speaking of things mattering, I told Nicole, I was going to do like a separate video, but this is going to take like two minutes. So I am just going to add this in on Wednesdays. We've been doing the woman with the alabaster jar. And uh, you guys know I've struggled through this book because of its inaccuracies. And frankly, in my opinion, I find this book to be extremely disrespectful to Magdalene. And I had said the last episode that I kept asking, why do you want me to read this? And the answer I got was because people need to understand there is such thing as junk conspiracy. That the bad guys are many things. Stupid ain't one of them. They put a lot of junk out there that's not right. That's kind of close to the truth, but not really the truth. And now that we know that, you think of things like the Da Vinci Code, all that kind of stuff. Like that's along the lines of this. And for me, I just made this decision yesterday. I'm not going to read this anymore because it gives me a migraine every time I read it. It's so full of inaccuracies that I feel like I can't really get into the flow of the story because I'm having to like stop every every other sentence and be like, that's not true because of X, Y, and Z. Now I had um, someone on my channel say that I was being cruel for calling out Margaret Starbird's inaccuracies. Honey, that's not being cruel. That's called constructive criticism. That's what critiquing and giving and giving your own um, interpret, like when I read people's commentary on books all the time, it's commentary. And I have said many times that I think Margaret Starbird, if she was writing this now would probably write a very different story because of the information she had when she wrote this book. Um, but this book is junk conspiracy. It's not accurate. It gives me a migraine every time I read it. It makes me very angry when I'm done reading it. I hate editing it. And so I just decided I'm not going to finish this book. Um, if you want to get this book, The Woman with the Alabaster Jar, you're more than welcome to get it and read it for yourself. I'm probably not even going to keep the book. I usually keep books. I'm going to actually probably donate this book, put it into the library or somewhere. I don't know. Cause that's just, 
it just grosses me out, right? It's, it's just not a good book. So that's that. Uh, Wednesdays for now, what's going to happen is, because usually Tuesday and Wednesdays are the book days, what I'm going to do since we are going through the Emerald Tablets on Mondays is Monday is going to be Emerald Tablets, Tuesdays the Acturian Analog, which I'm loving. I know Nicole's reading that as well. Um, and then Wednesday, we'll just do deep dives on Wednesdays. Like I re released Boudicca this Wednesday. And so we'll just continue. I've got another thing planned for next Wednesday as well that I'm still working on. So we're just going to leave Wednesdays open for deep dives until Spirit leads me to another book to read. But right now we've got two books going on, Emerald Tablets. And I, I think we're good for now. So with that being said, before we get into what you guys got up to, the shenanigans that you got up to last night, I'm going to go remind you guys. I know we've done episodes where we talked about my experience in India, which I will put that in the description box below. But Nicole has started a fundraiser to send money over to the safe house in India. And so I, we haven't really talked about that it's all set up now. And so you set it at 25000 which is amazing. I mean, oh, my God, you guys, if we got $25,000 to India, you guys have no idea what kind of that, – that would make a huge impact here in the United States too. But, like, in India, that yeah. was like, holy shit, that would – that would be incredible. We have $330 raised so far. I am going to be sending, I just told, um, I told Nicole that I am going to be sending every, every $500, I will probably be sending over to the safe house um, just to try to not have as many um, charges as possible for the transfer. And what I might do is send the first $500 and then wait for even more because that $500 is going to go a long way for them anyway. And then send even more on the second in the second go. And um, so yeah, I wanted to go ahead and share this with you guys. Again, I will put the episode down in the description box below. If you um, if you want to kind of hear my story of how I kind of started the Mysore Foundation and help these kids in India, $10 can help one kid for a full year. Um, I personally... Uh, I know somebody had commented that they were not trusting of nonprofits, and I get that, but this is my nonprofit. This is a nonprofit that I started a few years ago, or more than a few years ago at this point. And the safe house in India that I work with, I know them very well. I've spent a lot of time with them. It's a good, if you're going to donate to a quote unquote nonprofit, this is the one you want to donate to because every all the proceeds go directly especially through the Mysore Foundation. As I said in that episode, uh, when I'm in India, I'm in India anyway. I have to, you know, before lockdown, I would have to be in India for school. Every 18 months, I would have to be there. So uh, with the Mysore Foundation, none of the money donated went to me at all or anybody working for it because we were already going to be there anyway. It goes straight to the kids. And anything that we don't use in the slums, we always hand over the remainder to either the safe house or to the Joyce Foundation, which is what my teacher runs for for slums. So, um, so this is a per very personal. The Mysore Foundation again. I don't have a website for the Mysore Foundation because that would be like an Amazon wish list for um, people who like to uh, carpool children. We'll say. So I I don't have um, the pictures that I do use are all kids who are safe. Right. So those are all kids who are safe. These are very old pictures like this little girl is probably I was thinking she's probably like 20 now, this little girl. Um, so and and the safe house, I have sent the safe house information to Nicole because they do have a website, but I'm not going to share. I, I talked to Nicole about it. I'm not going to share that website publicly because I am considered a public person at this point. And um, mostly people who donate to this particular safe house are private private people and so the information doesn't get spread too far and too wide and so I just Nicole and I kind of talked about it and I just said I feel like it's safer if I don't share the their website pub I mean you want to yeah. elaborate on that no I think that's definitely the best way to go uh, you know safety is paramount for for these kids I mean that's why the foundation was started to begin with and um, I just wanted to point out that those pictures that you shared about your time there in India I mean you're whole being your aura your your light is so bright when you're there with them like that is feeding your soul and I know you go there for school and you have a lot of work that you do or whatever but I can't wait for you to be able to go back and every ten dollar increment that I see I think that's another child saved for another yeah. year and it's yeah. it's just it's absolutely the epitome of a good cause and so I really implore you if you are spending ten bucks today on a coffee 
maybe decide to do a little 10 bucks to this campaign to help save a child for an entire year in, in India. Yeah. And I will say the only reason why I haven't been able to go back is because there, the country was, is requiring that. Now, with that being said, it is India. So I probably could just take a crayon and write on a piece of piece of paper that I have it and they would take it. <laughs> custom. <laughs> that's the beautiful thing about India. I mean, oh I still, my gosh. I still have my 10 year visa, my 10 year visa. One of my visas that I'm on now is it's about to expire. I got actually, I'm going to get my new visa soon just to make sure I have it. But, um, but yeah, that's why I haven't been able to physically go back is because I don't, you know, because of the Zapperty Doodah. Um, and, but I, I don't think that's going to be around for hopefully too much longer. But the person that I know in India who kind of runs the safe house is also an American and she permanently lives there. And I know that they got hit really hard with lockdown too, because a lot of their, their, for example, like Ashtanga Yoga Atlanta, we take a percentage of tuition that we receive each month from students and we take a percentage and we send it to the safe house. Right. So there's a lot of shalas that do that anyway, is they'll send a percentage to, to give back. But since lockdown happened and we were affected financially, that obviously affects the amount you can give. And so they were also heavily affected. So this is going to mean the world to them. And once I get the donations going over there, I'll figure out a way if I can get, I don't even want to say her name because I don't want to dox anyone, but the lady I know over there, if I can even get her to send some pictures that we can share that keeps the location and everything. Because this, this safe house is completely blocked off. Like it is a huge brick wall that you cannot see. If you're just driving down the road, you have no idea. It's a huge, big brick wall. You have no idea what's behind it. There's no signs. You have to knock on the door um, and someone comes out, kind of looks through a peephole. And, um, and you know, if they, you have, they have to be expecting you. That's how how secret this location is for these kids. But, but the woman who started the safe house that she's done just a remarkable job. She came to India like me as a yoga student, learned the language fully to be able to help. She speaks it perfectly. Now it's hysterical to hear. She's been there for 20 years now um, and really mothers these children. And she's, she's, She's strict on them. She makes them like make their beds up and they have chores to do. But, you know, these are kids. And I know for Westerners, this might be really hard to understand. But these are children who, if they had stayed in the slums, they would have they wouldn't even know how to read or write. And now they have she, she teaches them how to manage money, to have banking accounts, to a lot of them are going to universities, which was never the case for them before. So she makes sure that they're in school, that they have everything that they're, you know, they take dancing lessons too. Like she has people come on and teach them these like after school activities that we got as kids growing up that we didn't don't think anything about, you know? Yeah. So she's doing a phenomenal job. She's done way more than I could ever dream of doing because she literally just gave her life to, to helping these kids. And so this is a lot of money for them. And this could, I mean, this could go getting them new, new mattresses, new sheets, so, you know, stuff that we don't even think about, you know, that it's so easy for us just to get new towels, to get to, you know, to keep the lights on, to keep the water turned on, to keep the, providing the food for them through, you know, for the, the, the cooks to be able to continue. She has older women um, who live in the, in the sleep house with the kids who are also slum women who help her with, cooking and all that kind of stuff. And so this is just really ensuring that that their function stays running and that they can take even more kids that need to be taken in um, in for protection. So and that's when and again, I'll put the video down in the description box below because we've already kind of talked a lot about this. So um, also a very good reference points for people to understand what this is like is to watch the movie Slumdog Millionaire. It's very accurate to what these kids go through is Slumdog Millionaire. So um, I've seen the kids get fingers chopped off and hands crushed so that they buy slum lords so that they can go out and beg for more money. Right. You know, it, it's, it's very sad. In fact, um, in Mysore and Gokulam, there's a older gentleman that lives on the streets. He's like the only person you really say living on the streets besides the slum people. And his legs have been so mangled that he walks on his arms holding two bricks and I don't know his story at all because he doesn't speak English and I don't speak Canada. I only speak like a few words in Canada. Um, but I would have, if I had to guess, he probably was a slum kid that was mangled by the, the slum lords to be able to get more money from people and begging. And now that he's an adult, he's out. So, um, so yeah, it's a rough life. Like we think we got it rough here. We, this is freaking piss easy compared to, to what yeah. the life that they've been given. So 
you know, to whom much is given. And as I said on with Jay and um, April from Spiritually Raw, when we spoke about it, you know, we all pick our, our dharma. We all pick the life that we're going to live for the karma that we need to learn. And just because some people will say, well, that's their karma. Well, it's also our karma to give back because yeah. we that's our karma is to help. It's, it's a mutual exchange of energy. And so thank you guys so much for everybody who has donated. Like you guys are rock stars and you are truly, I hope that you can go to bed tonight knowing that you have made a difference. Um, and a child you probably will never meet, but you, you've made a difference for them. You've given them meals and 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 clothes yeah. and yeah yeah and i've even had some people say you know what I, I don't really have a lot um but i could give ten dollars and i said well that's the thing ten dollars is going to take care of a child for a whole year mm -hmm. you know ten dollars doesn't go very far in the united states anymore um but it goes very far in, in in india so if you're feeling the push or the pull to give just whatever it doesn't matter a dollar is fine you know, yeah. oh, it, a dollar is a lot. Yeah, yeah. That's one meal for me in India. That's it. so you just bought a kid's meal. You just bought their lunch, right? Yeah. And yeah. even just, um, I, I'll reiterate this again. And even though I know we've talked a lot about the medical industry because Nicole worked in, it, and I'm not going to harp harp on it because we know, and now we know that there are things we don't want to take to to the medical world. But there are situations where we do need emergency such with doctors, you know, appendicitis, all that kind of stuff, and. That's one thing they have to counter with these kids, too, if, if they're going to have to go. And in India, um, you know, I've, I've been in India hospital twice, once for a kidney infection, one, once for a bacterial infection. And both times I was there for a few days and had constant treatment. And it was only $50. You know, in the United States, that'd be thousands of dollars. But but in India, for those kids, they can't even their parents can't even afford that. And so for for the people in the in the safe house, they provide that for them as well. If there's an issue they need to see that needs to be seen by a medical professional appendicitis. I mean, think, I mean, if you don't get your appendicitis, if you have an, an have to have an appendectomy and you don't, you're dead. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, so they, that, that goes a long way for, for them as well. And I know these people, the people that work in the safe houses, the Americans, they have pulled out of their own pockets as well, many times to keep this, this facility running and, and to give their lives for these kids. So yes, yes. Thank you guys so much. I mean, shoot 50 cents. Like it all, mm -hmm. I mean, I have about 50,000 subscribers on my channel. Think about that. If everyone gave a dollar. Change the entire landscape for them. They could open up a second for safe house and another Generations second. for generations. Yeah. 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 Just a dollar. Yeah. It's just a matter of perspective. You know, what, what we really do take for granted, they don't even contemplate ever having. And so um, it's just. No matter, like follow your heart. If you feel really moved to do that, do it. Whatever, whatever you're able to do, that's fine. We appreciate it. Absolutely. And I will say too, I had a lot of people inquiring about the pen pal program we spoke about. Once I start making the um, deposits into the slum house, I'll talk to the lady. I keep wanting to say her name, but I'm trying not to dox. Um, I'll talk to her about setting something up. So that she, you guys who want to do that with her can talk to her privately since I'm not in India right now and she can work that out with you um, with you privately. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, again, watch the episode that we did together. And yeah, so so I'll let you guys know once I've spoken to her and, and you that you guys can talk to her privately and figure out a system to to do the pen pal program with the kids. So anyway, all right. Should we, um, should we talk about what the shenanigans that you guys got up to last night? Yes. <laughs> we'll let you take it away, girl. Um, so, you know, I'm on, you may or may not know, but I'm on this faith journey and, um, the, the guidance of where I go and what I do literally comes from source. And so I, I confirm it with some of my, um, other, soul family members and some of them are also called to do things as well. And so um, myself and someone else was called to come to El Paso, Texas. And I was, I lived in Houston for like five years and I never, ever considered coming to El Paso. Texas. It was just a part of the state. I didn't ever feel drawn to or want to have any, any part of really until I was guided to come down here and um, I was talking to Bryce one day and she was like, well, where are you headed to now? And I'm like, I, I just got guidance that I need to go to El Paso. I need to be there within the week. And um, it triggered some information that came in 
to Bryce. And then uh, we collaborated, we confirmed, we, we further divinated it. And it culminated in a really, really beautiful um, ceremony that we did last night. So um, do you want to talk about kind of the information that came in uh, whenever you started, when we started tossing this idea around? Yeah, so this kind of all collided with the whole Boudicca stuff where I and I was and I was like, text Nicole, I was like, is Boudicca an ascended master? Like trying to figure out what what because that's the thing about Maggie Magdalene. She'll like tell you some stuff, but then she kind of like backs off and she's like, now you figure it out. <laughs> Do your homework. Do your I mean, that's literally how they how all of it works for me. You know, I'm, I get these messages and then I'm I literally like Lord Sananda will send a picture to Kathy and Kathy will send me pictures and, and she'll say, he said, you know what it means. That's like, You're like, do I know? <laughs> it's like being called to the front of the class and like, okay, now recite your book report from five, from fifth grade. Like <laughs> I just pull that out of thin air, you know, I'm like, uh, okay. But that is kind of how my abilities work. It, I just, I have Claire Cognizant and it just kind of comes in. And so, yeah, she, I heard Boudicca's name the first time from Bryce. And as soon as she said it, I'm like, oh yeah, for sure. And it, you know, called her in and, and got a lot of the power and the energy and, and started really um, feeling that the purpose, uh, one of the purposes of why we're, why we were called here. And so, uh, it ended up being a lot of women warrior goddesses. And this had, was, well, this was over Ishtar as well. Easter. Yeah. Yeah. And I was told to arrive on, on Easter. <laughs> Ishtar, which if you guys remember like Tammuz, so we're talking about the joining of the divine feminine, and the divine masculine. When mm -hmm. Tammuz was killed, Ishtar's twin flame, her other half, he wasn't sacrificed like Jesus or he was accidentally killed by a wild boar. And when he came to hell, which was basically earth, right? He went through the veil of amnesia. He couldn't remember. And so Ishtar decides to go down and bring him back to heaven. And so she has to go through the veil of amnesia too. And by the time she gets to him, she kind of remembers who he is and he kind of recognizes her and there's a long drawn out battle where she has to 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 battle the evil queen you know to get them back into back into heaven where they could be together and so this can be seen as many different things like the two sides of yourself coming together but also we started realizing through all these female ascended masters the really the one thing they all have in common is that they're divine masculine was taken from them. Right. Right. To keep them apart. Yeah. And it that's been such a underlying theme for so much of what has been battled over for, for the centuries. You know, um, people have been um, waging a war against that twin flame union because of the power and the energy and the positivity that comes from it and then you know those that are in the twin flame union uh, are having to live through lifetime after lifetime after lifetime of being torn apart and trying to find each other again and and um all for the all for the for the greater good you know all all to do what needs to be done for the population for the for the collective and so um, it has a much bigger effect than just, you know, paying homage to some some ancient acts. These are still battles that are happening around the universe and really on Earth a lot. So um, I, I thought it was really going to be um, for Maggie and Yashua and, and Ishtar and Tammuz and then Boudicca and her her man, um, but it grew. And I, I, when I realized all of the ascendant master goddesses that had been tormented over time and their twin flames had been ripped from them one way, shape or the other, um, it was a, it was a dual mission. So we were releasing the trapped souls that had been taken um, unfairly 
and also nurturing the souls that were left, which were the women warrior souls that have been, you know, doing these battles over eons and eons and eons. So um, I think it came through Bryce to do, uh, well, by way of Maggie, to do um, more of a indigenous people um, ritual where you burn, you do an offering where you burn the, the food to give nutrients up to the spirit. Yeah. And so it was all vegetarian. It was. Um, I want to be very clear about that because we know that darkness mimics light. It can't create. And she was very clear. It all had to be vegetarian food. They would not take anything from a dead. They would not touch any mm -hmm. animal or any that that's that's death. It's not life and it's not theirs. Yeah. And think about what the darkness does. They do human, you know, and yeah, she wanted you to burn food for them. In a, and this is the first time I've ever heard her say anything like this. And I didn't get clarity on it until this morning, which you were, what did you all burn? Apples. So we had apples, pears, celery, spinach, um, a potato. We did rosemary, oregano, um, thyme. What else? Bread. Had some bread and whiskey. And coffee beans. They they like their they like their whiskey. <laughs> yes, yes. And um same, same yeah. <laughs> it was it was um I, I, I started out y years ago in the military and I mean I've I'm from South Louisiana, so I could build a fire, you know, but it's been a minute since I built a fire. And um I, I had a fire pit in the backyard and I'm building the fire and it it, it went off without a hitch like it lit and it burned very well and i'm thinking to myself i've never burned food before like i don't even know how that's gonna work like it it it, it was beautiful and i um there's some pictures that will show and, and everything that but in immediately like immediately we could feel their presence they were there we we could feel it i could feel um we had motherships above us we had a lot of energy that was transpired. It was very emotional. I read off all the names. I went through probably um, 50 Ascendant Master women that had, um, you know, I had an incarnation, a Thecla, a long, long, long time ago. She's an Ascendant Master. You know, Isis, Hathor, Maggie, Mother Mary, um, Mother Sophia. With so many pivotal strong women that had been persecuted just for who they were which sounds a whole lot like us you know in this life in this now moment not a lot has changed jazz hands jazz yeah. hands That's yeah. us now. <laughs> and we're we're still fighting the same battle all along but this time we're winning like we are winning and so we we fed them and they were, we, we were very gracious for everything that they've ever done. Um, and they were very, very receptive um, to that. I don't know. I don't know um, if anyone's ever been called to do the same thing or, um, or has done the same thing. If you did, I would love to hear about it. But it was such a unique and powerful, moving experience. I don't think I'll ever have anything like that again it was it was awesome they do it they do it in Hindu temples as well but they don't do it in the burning of the food the burning of food is very Native American um they will just and I'm going to talk about this because Maggie kind of said to this morning I was talking about she said the next step um the Hindu temples they leave the food out for like the incarnations of Holly Goat there you know and then they ring the bell which we'll talk about they don't burn it and they take it away so I I've never had Maggie tell me to do anything like that before Right. And some people say, like, what, how do you know if it's a good spirit talking to you or a bad spirit? Well, the good spirit's never going to tell you to do anything that's going to hurt somebody else. And she was very clear. No meat. Very clear that they would, none of them would touch the meat. Right. Um, well, this morning, Maggie was like kind of telling me, like, right when I woke up, so I had all the pictures from Nicole. And she said something. She said, this is because our worlds are getting closer together. Right now, us in human form are hungry for spirituality because that's what we're missing. We're coming into this battle. Well, the veil is getting thinner. And so there in that spirit world, 
but they're coming into our world and they're starting to need energy from earthbound substances. Does that make sense? Yeah, because we've always heard the more that we ascend, the less that we'll need sleep and sustenance and, and the, the earthly heavy dense things because we'll be more in our light body. And so it, the, the, the convergence that we're having, you know, they're being less in that and they have to have some sustenance now that they're closer to this. Yeah, we're coming dimension. together. Our veils, as the veil thins, we get closer. And as we hunger for more spirituality, they're hungry for, they're going to need more nutrients. nutrients to stay in this dense area to keep fighting. And the whiskey. I just, I just love that. that They all request. They all, oh, they all request alcohol. <laughs> I know. And we were, uh, we had, we weren't going to drink the whiskey, but um, I was like, I, well, I was like, well, we did get some Modelo, like, <laughs> <laughs> let's have a beer <laughs> i'm mean, like shit if magdalene's cheers i'd be like cheers <laughs> like, let's just do this um well it's so interesting because when i did the boudicca research if you guys watched that video they would drink a lot before battle which i think was also like peyote and ayahuasca because they believe it activated so you know and i know if you're if you struggle with alcoholism that's that's a totally different thing you know you have to do what's good for you but i just think it's hysterical yeah. well maggie told me today as we start to come as the world starts to come closer and closer together, they're going to need that support. They don't need spiritual support. They've got that. They're going to need support from us just as they support us spiritually and protect us spiritually. We're going to have to start stepping up and helping them cope with the density of, of where we are. And so Maggie said it, you know, if, if a bunch of people want to do this, it doesn't have to be as elaborate of, of what um, Nicole did. Um, I think that was purposely done a big thing like that, because I think a big, uh, release, breaking of the release. veil was happening and they needed an instant like fix i'll say of apples and pears and whiskey and coffee yeah. um, all the good things all the good things so she said what you can do and this is and i'll have you verify nicole because again when you're getting this information you're kind of seeing it through the lens of your perspective if you want if you can afford this set up a place in your house that's like a sacred space and you can even like print pictures of Magdalene, Kuan Yin, Boudicca, whoever calls or not, or just make it a plain space. You can take just an apple or a banana, not a huge elaborate thing. If we're all doing this, there it's not going to be need that much. Just put it on the table and light a candle beside it if you can. I have a bell right here. You can ring a bell and call in. Um the ascended masters and you can also say you know i revoke permission for any nefarious beings human or otherwise listen nefarious beings don't want an apple they're not looking they feed off of us they're not looking for you know so you're pretty safe and you just ring the bell and call them in and allow them to eat and you can leave it up for an hour you can leave it up all day however long and then once once you have to go or need to move it you bring the bell to close it out and she was very specific that whatever's left of the food, sometimes you'll actually see, I've seen this in Hindu temples, sometimes you'll see the, 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 the fruit kind of lose its life. Like you'll see something's pulling nutrients from it. Um, take that, if it's if it's fruit or vegetable, take it outside and just leave it in the, in the backyard for wild animals. Uh, Maggie said, don't give it to your dog or your family. And I think that's because your, your animals and your family have access to food. So whatever is left, leave it outside as an offering to, to nature, to the ants, to whatever. Um, and, and yeah, and so it doesn't have to be, you don't, she was very clear. You don't have to go and buy like the nicest produce because they are able in their form, they're able to pull the good out and leave the bad. So it yeah. can be the cheapest apple out there. And yeah. that's fine because they can pull out what's good and leave what's bad. So she said, only if you can afford that, if you can afford to do something like that during the day for a few weeks, awesome. If not, she said, don't worry about it. If not, they, they're they very trusting in, in, in the universe. Yeah. And so, yeah, yeah, we were, um, there was, you know, a moment we were just sitting there watching the fire and everything. And I, it just hit me, you know, that this, I'm a fire sign I was watching the fire and watching it kind of dance around and have this life and, and energy and everything of its own. And, um, and I, I got the nudge to take some pictures and so I just started taking some pictures and everything. And I caught some, some spirit there that was there just right above where we were. And um, I mean, you, we could, you could feel it. It was, it was palpable. But to then catch it, it was just confirmation on top of confirmation 
that we were definitely doing what we were asked to do and being exactly who and what we were supposed to be in that now moment and honoring that. And um, yeah, it's just, if, when you're, when your intent is, is pure and you're, you're answering that call, um, however you choose to do that, you know, within the, the, the recommendations that come through your guidance is correct. You know, you follow your, your intention. You may not know the right words to say. You may not have any idea what to say. That's okay. It's not our words that matter. Our, our language is very, very minimal. It doesn't even come close to telepathic communication and the communication of the heart and the soul. But it's your intent that you have in that act that really matters. Yeah, absolutely. I, when the Arcturians say our language is primitive compared to their yeah. forms of game. and they don't care they don't care listen god doesn't care if you drop an f-bomb you know like yeah. they don't it, you can say hey you know ring your bell be like hey guys <laughs> <laughs> i didn't ring a bell i didn't ring a bell so you don't um, need to, this is just for your own house like in your little yeah. just to ring it in and ring it out you know yeah just to um, open and shut the 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 access it's like the dinner bell. It's like, oops up guys, come, come get your food. You know, um, you can even, I mean, even if, if your family's cool with it, if you come, if you have a you know, cool husband and kids, you could even, while you're having your dinner, put an apple or a banana out on the table and ring it in for them to join you in the meal. You know, it's, it's, it's just how you feel comfortable doing it. If you don't feel comfortable doing it, that's okay because enough people will feel comfortable that they will get the nutrients they, they need. And how beautiful is it that, all this time they've been protecting us, shielding us, healing us, supporting us. And now it's time for us to support them. And this is so easy for us to do. Like this is yeah. something so easy for us to do. Yeah. You know? When I put it out in, in the, in my groups, um, I mean, a lot of a huge push is to determine who is your soul influenced by which ascendant master chose you, you know, and that's, that's the thing. Like it's, it's, um, it's not just a topic of conversation. They choose you because they know what you have coming. They know the path that you're taking and the wisdom that you need that they can share with you. And so it, it's really kind of full circle that we're able to give something back to them that they need when they're always there for us when we need. All we have to do is call them in and they're there in, in a moment. And so it's just, it feels really good. It's a good um Close loop on that and this isn't gonna be, change. it's not going to be forever i feel like maggie's telling me to remind people this isn't something this is just for now for these this final battle for this final push where the i mean they're having you know, we think about the witches and the warlocks uh, of black of the black magic that we're up against that are human beings they're fighting those people too from a different realm Mm -hmm. And they need energy because they're having to come into the human realm to do what they can do. And so that requires human energy. And they know that because they all lived human lives. So they understand that that's what's needed, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, and so they, they love coffee, too. Like, they really like coffee as well, a lot. I, know. I gave them some really good coffee beans. <laughs> I'm not a coffee fan, so I'm like, what would I ask for? <laughs> Rum, some Skittles. <laughs> Every time I see Skittles, I'm like, Ugh, I, I love, love that. My Skittles. Some, I don't know. I love raisins. I know people think raisins are gross. I love raisins. I'd be like, leave me some raisins. Um, yeah, but they just need, that's all they need is the energy, the prana from the, the food, um, just to help them give them that strength they need to fight what, what they're here. They're fighting with us. It's not like they're doing it for us. They're fighting with us. Yeah. And what was it's something that you told me whenever we were kind of piecing all this together and Boudica really was coming in, you're like, she's our sister. You know, we stand shoulder to shoulder uh, with these powerful women and they never back down. They're always there to help us fight whatever battles we have to fight, whether it's personal struggles or in shadow work or really big battles on the, on the etheric realm, like whatever you're doing, they're with you. And um, this is the least we can do. Absolutely. I want to know, do you have your cards on you, Nicole? I've got a bunch of cards. Should we <laughs> ask, will Buddha could tell us why now? I think I know why. But like, why did she come? Why all these years has she kind of hidden, been kind of hidden away? We all learn. I mean, I remember studying Boudicca. I thought Boudicca was a badass when I was in school because she freaking took on the Roman Empire. But I see, I never, I've never heard her name. If I did, I totally forgot it. 
I mean, she was quite a badass. And um, I'm gonna I'm gonna use my her her images are inspiring. It just in them it's so strong, so powerful. Oh yeah, and, and that red hair, thick red hair. I mean, that was in all of the different. So when I was doing my research, all the different accounts of her from when she lived throughout all history desc describe her all the same way: very tall, thick red hair, piercing blue eyes, um, a, a, a priestess. She was a high priestess. She practiced medicine, which means herbalism, right? Um, and she was a queen and that and that she would work in the fields get this guy so she was a queen high priestess queen but she would go work in the fields with her people she would work beside them we don't see that in our world do we with our leaders and when she fought off the roman empire she was the she stood in the front lines so you know um today is a eclipse it's a moon day tomorrow 19th to the 20th, I think, is a eclipse as well. Okay, so I'm using my uh, amazing, wonderful Star Dragon Oracle cards. The first one I pull is Time. And Time actually has my constellation on it, Delphina. And the next one I pull is Surrender, Letting Go of the Darkness. And it's got an Earth Dragon on it. And the last one is Number 22, rebirth, giving yourself a second chance. So this is a rebirth portal. This is a rebirth time. This is the age of Aquarius. Um, we get to do all of that. I asked Boudicca what she wanted to tell us. And the first card came out, it was the hangman, which makes sense because mm -hmm. this has been her for how, I mean, we don't know how oh. long, guys. We have no idea, you yeah. know, but then all of a sudden, writing into victory so part of me feels like they kind of hid her away on purpose she's like the trump card like the is I, yeah yeah and then i got the ace of swords uh. which usually means words and and uh, words and thoughts but i there's a dove behind it i see this as a battle card yeah because i think she's gonna put to death what needs to be ended mm -hmm. so hold yeah. on yeah because she's got passionate love and then i had a one more clarifying card which was the sun card which is the fertility card yeah 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 that totally and it's time that's why i got the time card the time is that time card says you know you've been preparing for this you've been um basically building your strength to come out in a specific time and having the Delphinus constellation on the card is definitely a clue that I was a part of that. Just in that I was able to receive the message and we were able to pull that forward and open that door for them. I'm going to ask what Boudicca wants everybody watching to know. Because I, I pull people in the signal group, like the reason why I brought this story up is for you guys to know and know that you can call on her too. Like she's like... Yeah, I mean, any 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 ascendant master and I, i'll tell you when i got my divine feminine oracle deck i went through it i'm like i never knew I, we didn't i was raised catholic we, we never knew about any of these people there was like two people in the whole deck of 60 ascendant master women divine feminine that i had ever even heard of we don't know about these people and what they've accomplished in their life and we can always call them in yeah that's kind of so Bottom of the deck, I have the Six of Cups, which is like past life memories, balance coming, this good card, right? So I said, Boudicca, what do you want people watching to know? First thing I got was the Nine of Pentacles, which means like, we're almost there. We're almost there. What you want is coming. We're almost there. And the Star card, which is either the Aquarian card, my card, mm -hmm. or this also means prophecy. This is a major arcana. So she's supposed to be here right now. And then I got the King of Pentacles. The King of Pentacles is really grounded. So, and that's kind of how I see her, even though she's a warrior, she's like grounded. Like she's yeah. very stoic. So I kind of see her as being this King of Pentacles energy. That's just kind of how I see it. But also there's a lot of passion that's going to be coming from her. That's going to cause fighting. So this is the final battle guys. Yeah. 
Remember the yeah. first three cards. It's okay. This is the final battle because guess what? We're coming out of troubled waters. Yeah, we're sailing into the light. I feel like Boudic is like, bring it, bitches. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting for this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because like you said, we don't know when she was actually on the scene. We don't know like years and times and all that kind of stuff. No. But we know she was extremely powerful. She, extremely I mean, extremely powerful and grounded and fair. She literally went up against Nero, who is the Antichrist, is the 666, and she almost got him. So a female almost <laughs> took down the most sadistic <laughs> man. And I said in my video, the reason why I think she didn't take him down was because it wasn't time yet. Right. Divine timing and divine ways just keeps coming in my head. Divine timing and divine ways. She needs to be here in this now moment right now. For and I just, I heard someone say, I don't know if it was Magdalene or her say, but death isn't even real. So even yeah. though she died, she's still yeah. here. Death is an illusion. I just did a video about that. Check it out. I'll put it in the link below, the description box yeah. below. But um, is Nero here, I wonder? Is Nero on this earth or is he in spirit form? Let's see. Energy of Nero. I don't think Nero was an organic portal. I think he was sold and he chose the negative path. He's here now. And he's living a positive polarity life. Interesting. I see a lot of, a lot, I, I get that question a lot, you know, like, well, aren't they bad or aren't they, you know, well, swords, divine. You can always go to the light. I mean, I, I've literally bebopped around the country releasing dark souls that have been trapped and would love to go to the light, but the offer was never given to them. And they go. Well, and there. I will say too, if you guys study the law of one, the darkness can only go up to a certain level of consciousness and then they have to start over again. And eventually, that's why it's called the law of one. Eventually, it, they merge into the light. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, is Boudicca's... What was it? Hold um, I don't remember. Let me her see her. I have her husband's name written down here. I, I wasn't so focused on him because Persuticus. Yeah. Persuticus. Are they still separated? Persuticus and Boudicca. Yeah. Is his soul trapped by the darkness? Not anymore. Is he in human form or is he in spirit form? I just released it last night. That's part of what I did. Are they together again? Yeah. They're on there. They're, they're making love, not war. <laughs> well, Which is going to be super powerful, right? It's we're generating lots of power with that. Give people enough whiskey, man. <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. What a wonderful place to be. So <laughs> can we ask, um, I don't know if this is, in, I guess since we're not talking to our daughters, I'm very curious about our daughters, but we don't know much about them and what happened to them. So I'm not going to even ask because we, I don't know if Buddha. Yeah, I, I don't get an answer. They have to give us that consent. So yeah. So I'm sure, and she seems at peace. So I'm sure wherever her daughters are, are, you know, she's at peace with that. So I will put the, if you guys missed the Boudic episode, I will put that down in the uh, description box below as well. Um, if you live in the United Kingdom in London, um, again, if you go to, and I've, it's so crazy. I've been to Westminster Ab Abbey by Parliament, Big Ben, so many times, and I never even thought to stop by the Boudicca statue. But if you, if you kind of seeing how to say this, I didn't say this in my video, but I was thinking it. I feel like there's fragments stuck in that statue. Mm. So if you go there, maybe could we, does Spirit want people in London to maybe go and just try to release, just go there and maybe like try to release? Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's come through several times. I mean, I don't, I don't have to confirm that because, um, there's it's it's happened across the across the earth it's happened everywhere and so 
light beings that want to or feel compelled to clear out those trapped souls or asked to do so because that door really does need to be open and um you're definitely doing so much good you're just releasing so much positive energy in, in a space that's been literally trapped mary too if you can if you can afford it if you live near london or can go or live in london or can go to london for the day um if you can leave a flower at the statue the buddhika statue leave it there a red rose a rose the order yeah. of the rose the order yeah a rose if you can mm -hmm. you know I, it might get swept up that night by the street sweepers but just leave it there for the moment a uh, time is an illusion anyway so yeah yeah is there anything you want to end on nicole what's going on uh, you're you're going to be there for a while right yeah we actually just started our um kind of our to-do list um there's a lot there's a lot here in this in this region and there's some road trips in our future and um there's some some sacred spaces that we're going to visit and i'll keep you updated yay to be continued to be continued is there anything else you want to tell the audience before we sign off for the day uh no, I mean, I think that everyone should just realize that we really are very, very close to, we call it the flip. I don't even know what, what word to use or whatever, but don't lose hope because every single day there are people actively working for the greater good. And I left that quote unquote truther community a really long time ago um, because I, I don't need anything other than my communication with source. And that and our Senate masters and guides and archangels and angels, it's very, very divine in what I do. And I just, if you're feeling really lost or pulled or despondent, to just go within because that's where all your truth is. And if you want to come to Healing Disclosures on Telegram, we'll help you find it. We'll just help I you find your own truth. I feel like I left the truther community a long time ago too, even though I, you know, yeah. controlled opposition. I mean, it's the same controllers that, you know, we talk about Mockingbird Media. Well, that's on YouTube too, guys. You're just same, you know, the control of religion for our side is the church. The control of religion from their side is science. It's the same thing. It's the same mind control. And it's it's, um, it's what happened in the French Revolution. Yeah. And we just, I just, from my perspective, I just don't give it any air time because you know, we now know where the more that we think about things, that's exactly what we're going to manifest. And so we really want to keep it very positive and definitely in the light and, um, and doing things that feed our soul and feel good and are good for the community and good for others. And so I think that's a really good way to redirect that, you know, because there's a lot, if you can, you can get lost in that negativity and that another negative time loop, you just trade it one for another Exactly. And so please don't do that. Do your own research. Always do your own research. You know, at the end of the day, the intel doesn't really matter. It's 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 the story and that's just the drama of it all, you know. So this is um this is a this is a battle of good versus evil, and this is two two sides are are harvesting right now. Both the negative and the light are harvesting. So we're going to be seeing the negative until it's done because they're harvesting as well. Mm -hmm. um, I would highly suggest for everybody watching, please read the law of one series, start with book one. Cause I think that really cal will calm a lot of people down to kind of see like what's actually happening right now. Um, I'm going to say, I'm just, I feel I'm feeling like I'm being told to say this. I would not be going under any type of hypnosis right now for anybody. I, I don't trust hypnosis. Um, the law of one speaks about this, um, that hypnotics should only be used in a very temporary time because when you go under hypnosis, your guides and protectors have to really suit up because that's when they're going to try to hit you the hardest. So I would avoid that for now. Um, just, you know, just to be on this, don't, don't be stupid, right? Just to be on the safe side. Um, like I would also avoid, if you can avoid any operations right now, that's another time that they try um, if, if you can, if, if it's a, if it's an operation that you can put off for a while, then I would do that. If not, then, um, you know, just do your prayers and all that kind of stuff. But, but just be very, um, understand that 
you are you are your own sovereign being and don't be manipulated in any way whatsoever from any organization from any person talking head on your youtube screen or tv screen you know i always say don't even quote me like go right. research your own stuff like this is about you finding your you are you are claiming that buddhika power right now yeah right? so um so yeah absolutely so all right you guys well um yeah i guess yeah. that's it yeah, go visit our um, Give Send Go campaign. That link will be in the description box. And like we said, even if it's a dollar, it goes a long way for these kids in India. Yeah, and that's something good. If you if you need something to distract yourself, if you find yourself addicted to like watching YouTube the same way maybe you were addicted to watching CNN or go research things like India and like the kids and, and, and to change, right? Because energy cannot be uh, created nor destroyed. It can be only transmuted and changed. And so, yeah, you just take that and you change it, right? Yeah. And um, yeah. to love, as Victor Hugo said, to love another person is to see the face of God. That's right. There's nothing more loving than giving up your Starbucks coffee for a day. That's right. To feed a kid for a year. So, all right, you guys. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. We'll talk to you guys soon. Bye, everybody. Bye.